Formula One teams are taking notice of drivers with your skill and your ability. I mean, how big a difference would it make to you if a Formula One team called you tomorrow and said, yep, we'll give you the support you need? Any young driver's dream is to, to make Formula One. It's incredibly tough to get there. There's a lot of factors going to it nowadays. As time progressed, I, the dream was kind of falling away, falling away. And I think it got to 2015 that I kind of said to myself, right, Formula One's out of reach and I need to start pursuing other avenues now and uh, looking elsewhere to, to further my career. So there's nothing on the radar. I had no links with F1 teams. So I just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm just going to try as hard as possible, keep trying to get the results in and uh, just try and get noticed, really. I feel like I'm capable, but I don't think the opportunity will come. And then suddenly I got a phone call from Mercedes and everything changed from there. George Russell caught my eye a couple of years ago when uh, he walked into my office, sent me an email where I, he, I would have 10 minutes to have a chat with him. I got a nice email from a kid that I didn't know and he said whether he can come and uh, introduce himself and this is when he came all proper, uh, properly dressed, uh, black suit with a silver tie I think if I, if I remember correctly. And it was just when he did the steps from go-karting into single-seaters and he was a very confident young man. He was very proper and he described in a PowerPoint presentation to me his way into Formula One and where he could collaborate with Mercedes potentially. They invited me down here to Brackley to do a two-day simulator assessment which went extremely well and off the back of that I started doing development work for the team throughout all of 2016. They said they wanted me to be part of the Mercedes AMG Petronas Motorsport Junior driver program. And um, now we took him under our wings, put him into, into ART and GP3 and now let's see how, how he goes on. It's a first victory in GP3 for George Russell! Toto has been great. After my last victory in Silverstone, he was um, himself and Nicky Lauda were down at the bottom of the podium, so that was fantastic to see. And there is the checkered flag. George Russell wins in Belgium. George Russell is the 2017 GP3 champion. So I found out in March that I was going to be doing the two days young driver testing in Budapest, the current 2017 car. When I was sitting in the car this morning, uh, before I was about to go out, it was just, uh, yeah, just, like I say, a moment I've been looking forward to for such a long time. Hopefully it's the first of many tests and uh, races to come. The wait is over. Welcome to the start of the 2018 FIA Formula 2 Championship. We have a new car, new teams, and of course, new drivers featuring the most exciting junior talent in motorsport. George Russell, one of the rookies in this field. Uh, to be honest, I've had the sort of mentality that if I perform in Formula 2, the Formula 1 opportunity will come. Um, so I just need to focus on my job in F2, try and win as many races and perform to the, the best of my ability. And then if I'm performing on track, it makes the likes of Toto and everyone at Mercedes' job much easier when it comes to negotiating. From 12th on the grid to first to the end of the 21 laps, George Russell crosses the line to become an F2 winner with a storming drive. George Russell wins in Formula 2. George Russell converts pole into victory in Austria. For the fifth time this season, George Russell looks up, sees the chicken flag, and Russell wins at Monza. George Russell, congratulations. That was an epic F2 race win. Formula One teams are mad not to have you next year. <laughs> I'll let you say that. I think that was a bit cocky coming from me. I actually gave Paddy a phone call about um, probably three months ago. I, I knew him from when he was at Mercedes. I said, right, Paddy, I, I, want, to, uh, I want to be in Formula One and I want to drive for Williams. And um, could we arrange a meeting with, with yourself and Claire? He came to meet me at a race in summer of 2018, armed with a notebook. Half a week later, I was in Hockenheim, um, sat in their office. You know, there's a story he brought to the engineers, um, a PowerPoint presentation as to why we should select him for the race seat. And 
you know, no driver does that. And like, it really sets him apart because he took it seriously. And, um, that was our first point of contact and then things progressed from there. I'd like to get to Formula One, like most people. My goal is to go into Formula One Formula one day. Always been my ultimate Any goal. young driver's dream is to, to make Formula One. George, a day I'm sure you have long dreamt of. How does it feel to be, or to know that you are going to be a Formula One driver in 2019? Uh, it feels absolutely incredible. You know, I've, this has been a lifelong dream of mine. Out of the hundreds and thousands of people who have tried, you know, I'm, I'm one of 20. And that's, that's incredible. Champion of GP3 in 2017, Williams Formula One driver of 2019, and in between, he has conquered a super talented field, and George Russell is the Formula Two champion of 2018. And there's Toto in the background. That is why George Russell is signed up to the Mercedes Junior program. That is why Toto Wolff has placed him with Williams for 2019. How ready are you for Formula One, George Russell? Yeah, I'm extremely ready. I think um, I've had an, an amazing two years with Mercedes. You know, they've done an amazing job with me. I've never been thrown in at the deep end, and uh, now's my time. Indisputably, the absolute class of the field. It's very rare that a rookie wins the F2 season. So he won the F2 season and now we have, a, and now we have a problem <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be a future world champion. I know, it's what, what some of uh, my English they say that. told me earlier this, this year when you, when you put me in your car toe, so yeah. that's, <laughs> that's the, the trick. <laughs> like I said, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. I mean Mercedes and Toto have always had my back, they've believed in me from day one and probably just even from the financial support just to, just to be able to go racing in these these categories it wouldn't have been possible so if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have, have been in sat here right now. It just feels like a huge achievement to make it into Formula One but I don't want to be complacent to, to reach Formula One is one thing but to, to stay in the sport for uh, and have a long and successful career as I, as I wish to have is, is another thing. The team had two very difficult years and you know they wanted to change a lot of the structure and it was almost we had to make two steps back before we started to make the, the three steps forward so you know the fact is this weekend it's going to be another difficult weekend for us and we just got to do our maximum week in week out. I think for George it's probably been a particularly difficult year I think he knew what he was getting in, into when he joined us um, but I don't think anyone can really anticipate what it feels like particularly in a rookie year um, to get into a car that you know before you get into qualifying and you know before you get into the race is going to be um, falling at the back of the grid and, and I think that's probably been a real challenge for him. In Formula One things don't change in a night. These things take a lot, a lot of time and I quickly recognised that and thought, you know, it's a bigger picture here. We need to try and help the team for the coming years and build these foundations. If I came into F1 and I was put into the championship winning car from race one, I wouldn't have appreciated what it's like to drive a car that isn't tuned to perfection and as a driver you've, you've got your natural speed and you've, I think you've got it or you haven't but you become faster by making the car go faster, working with your engineers to make, to give the tyres in a better way, just learning how to make all the other external factors better so when you jump in you can do the business. There's no doubt we are going to improve, I think that's one thing we can all be sure of. All we can do is keep doing our best, keep improving the car as we're doing and see where that leads us into next season. There is really a different atmosphere and vibe about Silverstone and it's down to these guys. So uh, thank you, keep it up. And I mean, I can't show anything for it this year, but hopefully in years to come, I can uh, put on a bit more of a show for the guys. There really is a light at the end of the tunnel. So you know, we do just have to be patient at the moment and the success will come later down the line. But let us just say well done to George Russell and Williams for the first time since Brazil in 2018. Williams are through to Q2. Further confirmation that George Russell is a handy little driver. Yes, boys! Fucking yes! Nice one. Nice one. George Russell makes it through to Q3. Genuinely on pace for the first time as a Williams driver. If he says it was free, it was free, mate. Well done. Oh boys, on the mediums, yes, 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 that was fucking awesome. Russell is through, and that gets the biggest cheer of the afternoon so far. That's the lap, P7, nice work. Come on, boys, come on, 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 come on,
Come on! Are we through? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on! Yes, boys! Oh, yes! Uh, George Russell finishing in ninth. He gets his first points as a Williams driver. P9. George Russell. P2. And at the other end of the pit lane down at Williams as well, because it's a front row for George Russell in Spa. Woo! Yes, guys! Oh my god. Fucking hell, that was a lot. George Russell, front row. I'll keep saying it, and then I might believe it. That qualifying effort in Spa was one of the best laps I've ever seen. With one of the Formula One laps, possibly of all time. It's not just one of the best laps of, of your F1 career. It's one of the best quality laps we've seen in the last decade. It was unbelievable. The only good thing that really came from the weekend was, was George's lap, really. It was, it was absolutely amazing. A baby, George Russell will stand on the podium many, many times in the future in Formula One. Uh, but he does get his first podium in this sport in his 50th Grand Prix this afternoon. George Russell goes third fastest! What a lap from George Russell! That means George Russell has now scored points four times in the last five races, having never scored a point in his Formula One career for Williams up until that point. We could have quite easily in 2019 said, we are by far the slowest car, sit back, relax, and uh, just wait until next year. But the fact we kept on pushing and we kept learning and learning, it taught us in you know, situations like that, maybe we, we found a little bit extra and we were alive to, to the circumstances to, to capitalize it. And I think that's what we've recognized. Uh, if Toto hasn't got the decision done yet, I think this, this pushed him even more to Mercedes. Just the talent, his so great for his age and he deserves to be in the car that is capable of winning the championship and we fully support him in that. Hello folks and welcome to the paddock here at the Bahrain International Circuit on Wednesday the 2nd of December. News Lawrence. The big story, George Russell changing out of the Williams into the Mercedes. George Russell steps in. We learned that George Russell would be driving in place of Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes this weekend. Tell me how you found out. <laughs> well, I was—I uh, just popped to the bathroom at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I get a phone call from Toto, and he goes, "Are you in the bathroom?" Said, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in the bathroom. And he said, "Unfortunately, Lewis is, uh, has, has COVID. He's, he's, he's feeling well. He's feeling fine, but we'd like to drive." I said, "He's need a new driver, and that driver is sat over there. It's George Russell." What a weekend, a golden ticket for the young British driver. I think for George, it's a huge opportunity, like you said, Will, because he can prove to Toto Wolff and the rest of the Mercedes management that he has got what it takes to step up to the World Championship winning team um, and perform at the highest level. George Russell, fastest in FP1 and the quickest time in FP2 as well. It's a Mercedes front row lockout, it's Bottas on pole, but I have to say, George Russell, take a bow. You might have been beaten, but you weren't beaten by much. No, feeling good, feeling good to be honest, you know, um, had a good night's sleep going in with an open mind. I guess I've got nothing to lose, so go out, enjoy it and see what comes. Lights out and away we go. Russell does get away well. George Russell goes into the first turn and George Russell takes the lead at the Sakia Grand Prix. And it's George Russell then leading the way and leading a Formula One Grand Prix for the first time in his career, deputising for Lewis Hamilton. Car 44 becomes car 63, the car still out in front. Okay, George, we're going to need to box box. We have a mixed tyre set on the car. Basically, what's happened is they've got they've got some of Bottas's tyres on, or indeed all of Bottas's tyres on. George Russell overtakes Valtteri Bottas. George Russell's made up his mind to go down the inside late on the brakes into turn one. Enough room for Russell to squeeze past and back up into the top three once again. He's got the inside line, George Russell, into turn four. That was an easier move on Esteban Ocon. Looks like a rear left puncture. Looks like a rear left puncture. Uh, I don't know what to say. And the luck is swinging badly from driver to driver here at Mercedes. That's George Russell's chance of a podium absolutely gone now. George Russell is right now on the verge of getting back into the top 10. And I don't think there's anyone really would wish this not to happen. Russell deserves at least his first points finish tonight. And he is into the points. Could have been a win, could have been a podium. 
at least he's going to get his first points finish. I'm not sure that is any crumb of comfort whatsoever, but he has charged through the field and we're on now to the final lap. Sergio Perez comes home to win the Sakir Grand Prix. Wow, what a race for him and for racing points. Esteban Ocon, take it back. George, really sorry about that, mate. Honestly, you had the pace today. And, uh, yeah, really sorry for, for ending up in this situation. But still, points today. And you, uh, you really showed your strength. We'll give this opportunity again. I, I hope we get this opportunity again. Thank you. Obviously, just was not meant to be for us yesterday, so... What did your parents say to you? What did Toto say to you? Um... <laughs> Well, my mum couldn't speak because I think my mum was probably in tears. So she put my dad on the phone and he was just like, you know, you've got so much to be proud of and, you know, incredibly proud of you. And that was yours today. So um, that was nice. And likewise from Toto, he said, you know, he drove like a champion, so. But it's not going to be his last attempt to win a race. It's just the beginning of a fairy tale that didn't work out today. And I would say that um, a, a new star is born. I've got a lot to be proud of, really pleased with how the weekend went. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it and hope to get the opportunity again soon. Cheers. Um, when they believe the time's right, the time will be right. So I'm not hassling them, I'm just going out there, doing my job on the track and what comes in the future will come. So, um... uh, to be honest, I've had the sort of mentality that if I perform in Formula 2, the Formula 1 opportunity will come. But all you can do is just keep performing and it sometimes feels like it's not going to happen but at the end of the day, if you're performing, beating your teammates, that's all you can do. I don't know, my mentality changed a lot recently and I'm trying to take everything step by step. You know, I know that if I just keep on performing, the opportunities will come and... Um... You know, you can dream about the future, you can dream about victories but you've got to go out there and make it happen and I'm just sort of thinking in the here and now, enjoying what I'm doing and if I keep on performing, then the future will come, so let's see. Mercedes have to look for the future. If Mercedes are thinking about the future... But they've got to look to the future, and George Russell very much is the future. Not least because Lewis Hamilton's comments today were incredibly positive about the prospect of George being his teammate next year, declaring that George was, in fact, the future. And Mercedes have to think, two or three years from now, it will be Verstappen versus Leclerc versus Sainz versus Russell versus Norris. The next generation will take over. Mercedes have to be ready for that. Don't get any mistakes here. He is the real deal. He is a fantastically talented, fast, but calm and composed driver. He has the potential to be a world champion one day, and Mercedes know that. They know that this guy is a star of the future, a world champion potentially. Yeah, I mean, obviously, my ultimate dream is to become a Formula One world champion. Obviously, I want to be a world champion. You're of the age where you've grown up watching him do the things he wants to do. And it was so special seeing a guy like Lewis, who'd already won a championship, who, who was you know, one of the biggest names in Formula One at the time. It made you think, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to be like him. You know, Lewis is a driver who I looked up to for you know, my whole career, really. Well, first, I have so much respect for Lewis for everything he does on track, off track. I believe Lewis is the best driver on the grid and you know, probably the best ever to race in a Formula One car. You know, he's a seven-time world champion for a reason and in my opinion, he's a, the greatest driver of all time, so. I'd love to be in Lewis's shoes, you know, in a car first, you're capable of winning almost every single weekend and performing to a level that he performs week in, week out. I believe I can reach his heights. I'm doing everything I can to get there. But I believe I'll, I'll get there one day. I believe I'll have that opportunity. It would be my dream to, to be teammates with Lewis because I want to learn from the best and I want to go up against the best. And you can only, you, you've been yeah, there. You can you, only judge yourself against the best. But what are the positives of being Lewis's teammate? Well, the positive is you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain because you're up against the best of all time. No one expects you to destroy him. But if you manage to, boy, you're, with like, you're like, I mean, you'll be the, the absolute biggest hero of all time, you know? Now, earlier today, Lewis was saying that if you're brought in as his teammate, he'd expect you to flourish, to thrive in the Mercedes environment. I think it's a very good time for George Russell to be going to Mercedes. I think George has got the talent to do it, so I'm, we're going to be keen to watch it. I just want to win. I just want to win, and I'm trying my best, so um, 
Maybe not soon, but hopefully. When are you going to have your first win? Ooh. Next year. You, you might have given a few things away there. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't at all. It's all about timing in this sport. Yeah. But today, Kimi Raikkonen revealed he will be retiring at the end of this year. But of course, that stoked debate as the domino effect that that would have on the driver market. Uh, well, that is the million dollar question. Yeah. I've got to say that Valtteri Bottas replacing Kimi Raikkonen has got to be the, 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 the key line now. I think that's the favourite favorite option. Confirmation that Valtteri Bottas will join Alfa Romeo for the 2022 season, that's next season and beyond. Valtteri Bottas will not be driving a Mercedes, he'll be driving an Alfa Romeo next season. But what it means, perhaps even more intriguingly, is who will be Lewis Hamilton's uh, partner next season. Of course, widely reported that it will be a British 1-2 with George Russell. Mercedes top brass have turned out in force to see a driver that could well be their guy in the future. A guy who might be wearing a black uh, fire suit with a, uh, a silver star <laughs> on it next year. Who knows? They could be teammates next year, sharing even more podiums in Formula One. Well, today here in Spa, they share a podium uh, for the first time. We saw this one coming uh, ever since the announcement that Valtteri Bottas will indeed leave Mercedes for Alfa Romeo at the end of 2021. Congratulations to you, George. The worst kept secret in Formula One has now been confirmed. Announcement, confirmation that George Russell will be his replacement, will partner Lewis Hamilton from 2022. George Russell, 2022 Mercedes full-time race driver. How does that sound? <laughs> but this is, the, this is the big story that we've been waiting for, I think pretty much all season long. Just tell us how happy are you about this move to Mercedes? Yeah, of course, extremely happy. You know, I've been part of Mercedes for, for a long time. I guess in a way it almost feels like going back home. It's obviously sad to be ending this chapter with Williams because we've come such a long way together. They're equally very excited for, for the next step. We've seen flashes mm -hmm. of brilliance from him, but those flashes have become more frequent. It's become a not just sparks, it's become a fire, a raging kind of inferno behind him, pushing him up towards that top billing. They are getting a driver that is super hungry to prove that he is the best in the world. I genuinely think when you look at George and the way that he talks, he, he sees himself as a multiple world champion. And giving the opportunity to go against the greatest of all time is, is a huge opportunity. For me, I guess I feel really privileged to, to have that chance to, to learn from him, grow as a driver, as a person, because he's been there and done it seven times before. And, and he now gets two years, potentially maybe more, to learn alongside Lewis Hamilton, uh, who George Russell has referred to, as you just heard, as the greatest driver of all time, and statistically very much is the greatest driver uh, of all time. You're now his teammate. I mean, do you, are you aware of the challenge you're up against? Oh, and... of course I'm aware. <laughs> it's not going to be easy, for sure. And um, but yeah, I guess, you know, looking back at that, I was just like a kid with a dream, and then suddenly it sort of came into reality. I have to ask you, I mean, you've done all you can this weekend, surely, to show where you should be driving next year, with all due respect to Williams, but do you have any idea when this result, this, this, your, your future will be resolved or will know? And do you know, if, does it depend on maybe situations elsewhere and movements elsewhere? Um, yes. OK, thanks, Thank George. You. And George, this is your final race for Williams. It's been a hell of a year. Q3 appearances, podium. What has the team done for you? I mean, they gave me my first opportunity in Formula One. George is, I think, a one in a million driver. And I just want to say a huge thank you to, to Claire and to Sir Frank for giving me this opportunity in Formula One, which I will remember for the rest of my life. Above all is... Um, yeah, similar to what Kimi said, you, you, you build these bonds and these friendships with, with people and especially through the good times and even the, the tough times that you grow quite closer together with so many of your, your core group of, of people and um, 
you know, that will last forever. If you told me at the start of the year we'd be qualifying in the top three twice this year, four Q3 appearances, uh, 20 odd points on the board as a team and, and a podium, I'd have said no way. So, yeah, I look back with a lot of pride. You know, he's an immense talent and uh, he's, he's done a fantastic job at Williams. Everyone I know down there is very proud of him of what he's achieved. And the experiences we've shared together, especially recently, you know, the double points finish in Hungary and then, you know, that front row start, qualifying P2 in Spa and ultimately going on to score the podium. Yeah, I guess sometimes I've just got to pinch myself and, and recognise the position I'm in because, you know, we travel around the world, we do race after race after race. And I think we don't, we don't realise how fortunate we are doing something that we love, which is pretty exceptional. And I think those results this year represent three years of hard work, and that's what I'm most proud of. Just sum up your emotions, uh, drawing a line under this part of your career and looking forward to next, uh, next year. Yeah, definitely some emotions, and I'm sure tonight when I say goodbye to everybody, uh, there will be... Uh, very grateful for my time and looking forward to uh, my next chapter. But he's very much, he's come through the company, as you were saying. He, he's been there from the start, they've lent him out, if you like, but, but uh, Toto and, and Mercedes driver from a, from a young age, James Vowles has coached him as a strategist when he came through uh, GP3, F2, and so he, he knows it, it's his home, really. But he never once talked Williams down, even in the darkest days, did he? Got in, kept his mouth shut, kept his foot down, and did the best he could in, in a car that was right at the back of the field at the time. You know, they are a team that are on the up. Uh, I hope they get there sooner rather than later, but, you know, I'm sure they're going to be in safe hands with, with Alex and Nicholas, and obviously, Jost at the helm, steering, steering the ship, things are, things are looking good. Thank you. Give a massive roar to the home hero, George Russell. Um, no, I mean, George Russell, this is one of the things we're all looking forward to most next year. It is going to be so damn cool to see George Russell, the, one of the greatest talents from the new generation, uh, up against Lewis in the same car with the opportunity to win and, the, and win the championship. So it's just going to be so awesome.